Welcome to the Functional Tennis Podcast. I'm your host, Fabio Molle. This week, I'm in Paris, spending time with the Essex team at their Paris house, just located outside one of the gates of Roland Garros. The reason for the Essex house is to allow their sponsor players to drop by and pick up the new apparel for Roland Garros and for Wimbledon. Also take some photos and give feedback on the previous range of Essex apparel. The Essex team listens to all the players' thoughts on the clothes and shoes and takes this on board when developing their next range. It was a great experience for me to be in there listening in on these conversations, especially after last week's episode when I talked to ASIC product manager René Zanbergen and how he discussed how Novak Djokovic pays so much attention to every single detail, no matter how small, but those details that could offer him a small improvement to his game. This week, I heard the likes of Borna Courage, Blinda Bencic and more discuss small details that could make a difference to their game. It was amazing to hear. Today, I chat to ASIC's athlete Rohan Bopana. Rohan was one of the first ever guests on the Function Tennis podcast nearly four years ago. He's one of the nicest guys on the tour that I've met so far. And this year, at 43 years of age, he has re-entered the top 10 with some great wins throughout the year with his partner, Matt Ebden, who we also had in the podcast. Rohan tells me he's no cartilage in his knees, how he manages this, as well as what has changed in his game recently that has led to his great form. During the next two and a half weeks, I'll share shorter episodes with some other Essex players. I'll have the talented Alex Malkin, who is coached by Marion Vida, Novak Djokovic's former coach, the informed Borna Courage, who is looking stronger than ever after his shoulder injuries, Olympic champion Belinda Bencic, who Essex recently signed, and I also speak to Marina Cayazzo, who's a global sports marketing expert for ASICS. She tells us what ASICS looks for in the players they sign. It was a great opportunity for me to speak to these, and I hope you pick up some insightful knowledge throughout the episodes. If you do enjoy the episodes or find them helpful and you're not already subscribed, please hit subscribe button on your podcast player or forward it to somebody who you think may find it useful. It really helps the podcast grow. Okay, here's Rohan. Hi, Rowan. Hey, Fabio. Welcome back to the yeah. Functional Tennis Thank Podcast. You. Thank you. I saw you last month in Piatti. Yes. Um, and you look very lean and trim. Uh, what's changed? We've spoken, I think, four, nearly four years ago now. Yes, that's right. And uh, yeah, what, what's changed? You were playing 20 years on the tour then. So tell me, 24 years on the tour now. You're having a great year. What's, we were going to, I know the secret, actually. I know one of the secrets. <laughs> but uh, yeah, how have you been? No, I've been actually uh, pretty good. Really enjoying my uh, you know time on the court. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I love competing. Every time uh, you know I'm on tennis court and uh, I'm at a tournament, I really enjoy that practice. Maybe not. I mean, uh, some days I'm not even practicing because it's easy on the body. The, what I've really changed uh, this year, especially, is. Uh, to focus a lot on my recovery part because I feel uh, when I'm fully recovered and feeling better, I play much better on the court. And uh, uh, the biggest thing has been my perseverance and my mental strength. Uh, I think some days, even if I'm physically not feeling great on a match, mm. but I'm mentally there. And, you know, I, I so that is, I think, my biggest strength and it has been for... Uh, uh, many years so what I really have understood myself and I go back and watch my videos and I really feel uh, how to constantly try and improve you know my game or what I could have done better in that particular aspect I mean sometimes you know I've uh, spoken to players where they say oh you know I my partner missed this volley this happened crucial time but I go back and tell myself maybe my serve was not good enough yeah hence you know, the volley was missed. I didn't hit my spot, you know, current because the margins are so small. So the minute I started doing that and I started focusing, uh, you know, and particularly on myself, it got better towards the team. It started, you know, focusing and, and, uh, and enjoying my tennis better. I'm a very hard critic on myself. Yeah. So, uh, and, and actually now I've, uh, relax, you know, relax, relax a lot, you know a lot more, and I say yes. This is this is what I can do, and I know my strengths. Uh, you know what I can really yeah. bring into the team, how much I can uh, bring in, you know, to the match as well, and uh, uh, you know that is that has really helped. And uh, you know, playing with Matt, uh, I think he also is extremely. Uh, 
strong out there in playing close situation, mentally strong. And I think that has really helped the team. I mean, we uh, we put a lot of pressure, um, especially on uh, teams, when uh, with bringing a consistency on the court. And I think this is what has made that uh, yeah. change. And, uh, uh, you know, playing uh, the full-time doubles partner also really helps because you can work a lot off the court as well. And uh, having... Uh, you know Scott Davidoff, who's been uh, you know with me for now over a decade, traveling with me and understanding me. That also is you know something which yeah. uh, you know uh, helped. Uh, you know, it just he just really knows you. And you really know him, and you know see the slant walk boxes to yeah. To take. I think uh, sometimes that outside perspective is needed. Mm. You know, even though you have played tennis for so long, you know, of course, he's not there to teach me how to do a forehand or how to do a serve, but to when watching from outside to actually, uh, you know, talk about those small things I could have changed, you know, yeah. where maybe I hit a short cross court uh, forehand, uh, he could have said, uh, he probably says maybe that was not the right time to hit it. Mm. Or just to find those fine, de minute details yeah. to in order to make that of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're a... A quick learner. You don't like making the same mistake twice. No, ideally, you know, if, if we want to get away from that and where we can, uh, you know, constantly get better at every single thing. And uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, focusing on my game has yeah. made that difference. Yeah, R rather than blaming. Absolutely. External. Yes. Yeah. And t tell it's me easy to, you know, find faults of, mm. you know, okay, hit the line, bad bounce, you know, but you can't change that. The thing yeah. is, you know, this is part of the sport. You know, it's raining, it's, you know, on clay court, it's drizzling, we can't do anything. Unless, of course, it's really, yeah. really heavily, then it's different. But then if it's windy, but we can't, you know, change that. You need to find, you know, ways. You do hear, I, I, I do be around some tennis players a bit, even at your level, and you do hear, oh, the draw was tough. There was easier players on the other side, the draw. And this, there's always an excuse, but it's good that you take responsibility and it comes down to you performing on the day and... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's uh, uh, it's like uh, hitting a serve. That's the only thing you have in control. Yeah. So you know you can't you know uh, control the other stuff, and you just have to you know uh, look at what you have and just go with it. Uh, you know, yeah. if you want to win a tournament, you have to beat everyone at the best. I mean, whether you play them first round, whether you yeah. play them in the finals, eventually, uh, eventually, you, if you want to do well, you have to you have to you know beat everyone. Yeah, nice. And you met. We chat before. You said. One, one, I want to know more about your recovery, what you do, because to make sure you're in best shape. And two, you mentioned yoga to me before. You said that's been a great help in getting yeah. you into great shape. And so tell me a bit about yoga. I did, I can't remember the name, but I did Google it. I, was, I told my wife, I'm, I was telling her about Rowan was doing this yoga. Maybe I need to try it. And then I saw that it was two people yeah. yoga. And it's like, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. yeah. So tell tell us what's the yeah, yoga so, called? So um, the yoga is called the Iyengar yoga. Uh, it's um, uh, one of the first forms of yoga which has uh, you know started. Uh, um, so in 2019, I found out that I don't have cartilages on my knee. It's fully worn out for the years of playing with the wear and tear. Um, so I tried some hyaluronic injections, some PRP, but unfortunately, it didn't really help that much and. Uh, uh, my cousin's sister, she practices yoga, she teaches yoga. So she told me for the condition you have to try Iyengar yoga. Not that what she practiced, but she said try this. So I actually found out um, where I can look up uh, Iyengar yoga. And uh, fortunately for me, it was right next to my house in Bangalore, a uh, place called the practice room. Um, uh, this husband and wife, Mohan and Jaya, were teaching uh, yoga. And I contacted them and uh, and I told them this is my condition. Uh, and I really want to know if there's some way we can, uh, you guys can, you know, help me out because I'm not really ready to go into a surgery and replace my knee as yet. So I want to try something. And I think that's where the perseverance comes from yeah. there that I'm able to at, even at the age of 40, uh, that was in 2020. So I was 40 years old to, to try something, you know, different. Um, the pandemic did help in a way yeah. because what happened was, I was home for that much uh, time, four, uh, four, four and a half months. So that way I got to go for yoga sessions uh, almost four times a week, uh, 90 minute sessions. Yeah. Uh, so I started going there, practicing. It was very different. Uh, and it is a very active yoga. I mean, intense yoga. You, you get into, because there's a lot of props used like ropes, 
chairs, blocks, uh, you know, and it, um, uh, so they actually um, studied a few videos of how I'm playing and, and really focus on to see how it could change me. And this, what they started doing is strengthening my glutes, my quads, uh, everything based, based on that. And I think uh, that made a significant change, significant difference uh, uh, from in 2019 as having two, three painkillers a day to no painkillers a day. Oh, and you know, right. so the strengthening that in, in inner part, and and I think also that yoga helped align my back a little better, uh, even may help me focus a lot better. So I really feel that I don't feel rushed on the court today. You know, so I wish I you know I could travel with my yoga teacher, but it's already when you have a coach, physio, and if I do have a yoga teacher on board, that's too much of an expense already yeah. to travel with. And, and you're with your family as well. I'm exactly, I'm with my. Yeah. Wife and daughter every week, so you know, uh, paying for five tickets is too much. Yeah, well, you, well, at least you do. You have an unbelievable year. Yeah, so. no, but still, you know, for, know. at the end of the day, uh, you know, when you play for four or five tickets, it becomes a lot. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, of course, uh, all the other expenses and especially of all the bags, Asics, give you all the clothes. Everything, and, uh, yeah, you know, so you're constantly on the road, living off of a suitcase and living out of hotel rooms. It's yeah. not uh, not easy, but. Uh, so last year also, I, I was always traveling with physios. I think uh, I'm just going to jump in here. Yeah. Uh, you did, last time we spoke four years ago, I said to you, what's been big in your game? And you mentioned it was traveling with a physio. Yes. That's what yes. You, so you always have, but now you have an extra layer to that. No, absolutely. I think that has made a um, tremendous uh, for difference. Uh, you know, uh, able to just find the recovery after you play, before you play. So this year, what I did was um, I had a physio from Belgium. Her name is Rebecca. Um, so I met her last year in the Antwerp tournament. She was working in the ATP um, physio room, and uh, uh, since I didn't have a uh, almost the whole year no, no physio traveling with me, and I really needed one, so I uh, asked her, and she was free to you know travel, and she said, that, "Yeah, she'll be happy to travel." And uh, that has really made a difference. So this year, what I did was to really focus on mobility and stretching before I even start my practices. Uh, and do a lot of foam rolling uh, when I wake up in the morning and uh, and do a proper recovery in terms of uh, making sure I go to the ice bath uh, yeah, religiously every single day, whether it's practice, yeah. matches, and then get my massages after. Uh, so all these things, I think, are making a difference. I mean, you know, uh, so practice, like I mentioned earlier, I'm you know, really figuring out the days I really want to practice or not practice. <laughs> yeah. And what happens, you know? sorry, couldn't you in here, what happens when you don't want to practice? You say, Matt, I can't practice today. I just, it won't do us good. Does he have to go find another practice partner? How does that work? Yeah, I think he understood, uh, you know, coming into this partnership, uh, you know, that, yeah. you know, some days, you know, it is going to be definitely difficult. But I know, I told him that anytime there's a match, whatever, I am there 100%, no, yeah. you know, no matter what. Uh, but he understands that, so he's happy to, you know, go and find somebody to, you know, hit with and or, uh, uh, you know, the days he needs to hit some extra serves or he wants to do something, he's, he goes there by himself and manages that. Um, especially um, uh, these master series, now it's two weeks uh, yeah. tournaments, you day, day, do have a lot of days off in yeah. between. So uh, there are, uh, even in uh, Madrid, we had like, uh, you know, three days off be be between our matches. So I take the day off. So then we still have two days to practice okay. and, you know. Uh, so it's about, I think, finding the right way for your own self. I, I don't uh, recommend that just because I'm doing it, someone else should try it. I think you need to find that exact way. I Now I do a lot of uh, uh, therabands or, you know, use yoga ropes, uh, you know, blocks for, for me to w do my workouts. I don't go to the gym anymore. Because I really feel that's not something which really works for me. So th this is, uh, you know, a few things which I have definitely changed. And how often do you do, you do the yoga every day? How yeah, long I do. Does it take? No, no, I do the yoga every day. But unfortunately, since I don't have someone traveling yeah. with me, so I do it about twenty to thirty minutes in the room. And and again, in the room, it depends. Uh, you know, if I have enough space in the room to really yeah. do it, otherwise, I come to the court and you know do. Uh, 15 20 minutes uh, uh, you know few of the things where uh, you know i can uh, really make a difference or when i get to a hotel room i take a picture of the chairs or the couch or if at all there is 
couch very rarely, but on the chairs in the room. And I sent it to my yoga teacher and he actually sends me what I could use that prop and try and, Brilliant. you know, do something. So I really uh, think that, you know, you need to constantly try and find find ways to help. Nice. And with Matt, have you given Matt some parenting advice? He has a little girl, is it? Yeah, a boy. A boy, sorry. Boy, he's, a, he's just Harvey, well, yeah. he's quite a, just a new, not newborn, many months under yeah. a year, is yeah, it? Yeah, just over a year. Under, a year. Yeah, yeah. So if you've been given, has that helped the relationship like that you're, you know, you're you're not with a young Chapovala who's a big, you know, does yeah. that make a difference in a doubles relationship or does uh, it no, not No, I matter? think I, you know, parental advice definitely, I think everybody, uh, it's so different, uh, you know, so I don't really uh, Good advice. Uh, think, but I love kids. I mean, you know, every time I see Harvey, he's, you know, so much of fun and, you know, I keep uh, trying and bring the uh, smile out of him every time I, I right. go there. So it's always nice to, you know, have the family around such a lonely tour uh, you know that uh, tennis even though we travel week in week out constantly it's yes at at a higher level you are able to afford a coach or a physio or a family to travel but when you're starting off it is extremely difficult i mean you can't really afford that and uh, you know so that becomes harder and harder and i really feel um uh, you know, any any time you have some friends, family around to make the most of it. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. players do have a lot more downtime, I feel, on the circuit than when they're back home because there's always something going around, especially for me in back yeah. in India, there's, you know, going to be the family. Not, not, yeah. not because of, uh, you know, being a celebrity or not, but just, uh, no. since I have my academy there, there's always more stuff going. When I, on the tennis circuit, I really feel, uh, you know, you do your practices, you do your stretching, you do your uh, uh, treatment and everything, and then you have time that's where i really go and explore my coffee world <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. we'll we get into that in a sec but yeah. you mentioned the female physio has that been harder tournaments getting access to like the, i know let's say the male if you're male physio didn't come into the male changing room how does that work so the uh, the best part of uh, that i think a lot more tournaments have uh, set up private physio rooms okay. so whether you have uh, you know for a female athlete to have a male physio or uh, okay. uh, you know the other way around i think so that has really helped so you don't really have to go into the locker room mm -hmm. uh, you know you can book the private physio okay. uh, tables and then it's it's actually easily manageable how is the coffee business are you still crazy into it or are you actually busier with all your success in tennis that it takes away so fabio here's the the biggest thing, probably not many people know, the coffee came before my tennis. I've, I, yeah. I've always been, it's been in the family, we grow coffee. So that has just been, you know, part of the journey. Yes, I, uh, you know, started my own blend, uh, the Ron Bopana Master Blend. And, uh, uh, you know, I tied up uh, with some friends back in Bangalore. They have a cafe and I introduced my blend in their cafe called the Maverick and Farmer. And that's doing pretty well. I mean, it's got a lot of people have enjoyed the coffee. I've brought a lot of coffee beans and given out to a lot of the players who have really, uh, you know, enjoyed it. I wish I could travel with, uh, you know, more. Uh, the the toughest part is that I hardly go home when I'm traveling. So, yeah. you know, so, but every time I go home and I come, I do uh, travel with my coffee and I have uh, constantly have shared, uh, you know, the coffee around and it's been actually uh, really good. And now uh, a lot of the players, <laughs> when the tournament doesn't give them coffee, I, they come straight to the locker room and they see me and they tell me it's bad coffee. I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> nothing I can do. Yeah, but, it's know, I, yeah but, uh, but it's nice. I mean, you know, if some uh, I know there are a lot of players who love their coffee. So if they're in that city and they find a good coffee spot, uh, you know, they're happy to message me and let me know. And so it's good. We, yeah. we share, uh, you know, good spots. So, you know, so that way, you know. Is, can... is Dave O'Hare, do you give him some coffee? Yeah, actually, David, uh, you know, they did uh, try some coffee and I think uh, he enjoyed it a little bit and he loves also exploring the yeah. city. And yeah, he loves his coffee. And question we ask all our guests that we didn't ask them before when you were on, it's a newer one is, we're all about getting 1% better every day, small marginal gains. And I know you've mentioned to me before, like you've a step-by-step -step process, you know. So what 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 advice do you have for junior players and even for parents to, you know, things they can look at to get 1% better every day? So uh, the biggest uh, advice is for, uh, to the parents for me is um, if they're enrolling their kid at the academy to trust the coaches. Uh, because I've seen it before that uh, the parents, when they send the kid out to the academy, they're at the fence standing like this and then coaching the kid or telling him something or so the kid is confused right now i mean the coach is telling you something and the parents are out there putting so much of pressure so i i tell them it's like going to school have you ever gone to a classroom and sat there and 
and said something when the teacher is yeah. you know teaching the class so i said similarly in tennis if you are enrolling them to academy trust the coaches who are there and let them you know go through that journey and that is i think uh, you know the biggest thing i keep uh, you know advising the parents nice great and question regarding asics gear which is beautiful uh, what do you think of it no i've think? been uh, using the athletes uh, apparel for a long long time and uh, i think it's phenomenal uh, you know i'm really happy to be associated as an uh, <laughs> Uh, a six athlete and uh, uh, the biggest love is the shoes for me. I think uh, I think they make the best uh, you know shoes out there and they, you know as long as you're comfortable on your feet, I think mm. that's a big winner. And you know if here you see they have uh, do you like the nice color? bright you, pink. I love it. Happy? I mean you know it goes perfectly well with my skin color. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the really and you're a resolution fan. Yeah, I'm a big you're... resolution fan and uh, yeah, so extremely happy with the uh, the gear. Great. Well, Rohan, best of luck. Thank you, Fabio. Thanks um, so much for having we'll me. We'll see you soon. Yes, absolutely. Really hope you enjoyed that episode. Rohan is so nice. I love speaking to him. It always has so much time for me. Really amazing guy. In our next episode, I'll be chatting to Slovak Alex Malkan, who's currently coached by the former coach of Novak Djokovic, Marion Vider. We get some insights into him. Other than that, here's to a great French Open. Really hope you enjoy it. <laughs>